back to piano book. I'll explain. And one of the customs guys, just massive Spitfire user, just won an Emmy. Congratulations to you if you're watching this. Ross. So Ross, where are we and what are we doing? We are in Denver, Colorado, the Denver International Airport, and we're <laughs> about to embark on a 90-minute drive up to 9,400 feet where a baby grand Yamaha piano waits. So we have an oxygen tank for you. We have a big one. It's the size up to your up to your belly button. And so, you know, if you need oxygen, we'll hook you up. But what are the, what are the symptoms of altitude sickness? You're susceptible to headaches. You're going to be very thirsty. You can feel a little dizzy. It's got to take it easy, so no raging at the pub or smoking a lot of marijuana. Yeah, um, no, because it's legal here, so. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you just you just take it easy tonight. You'll be okay. Um, and the hiking, if we do any hiking over the course of this trip, we'll just take it easy. Okay. So even marathon runners can have altitude sickness. It's just okay. a concept of your blood thinning and not having the right amount of oxygen. So how did this come to pass? I checked out Piano Book and I downloaded a bunch of the other instruments that our other peers have created and you have created. I was like, shit, this is really cool. And I had this really cool instrument that's been part of our family for so long. So I was like, hey, you know, I, I'm i going to record this, but Christian, I think you can do it a lot better than I can. I think <laughs> it'd be a hell of a time to hang out with a peer. So why don't you come on up to the Rocky Mountains and let's see what happens. We're about to go through the Eisenhower Tunnel, which is the longest and highest tunnel in America. I'm possibly North America, but definitely the lower 48 states. And we're here at elevation of 11,400 feet. This is just in case I start collapsing from lack, <laughs> lack, lack of oxygen. Oh, that, that up. Can you hear it? Nice yeah. white noise sample. Yeah, oh, catch that. <laughs> so here we are. How really exciting. So you've lived here for 19 years? Off and on, 19 years. Uh, went to middle school in this house, but have traveled and lived here pockets throughout the past 10, 12 years, primarily in Los Angeles now, but when the snow falls, I like to be here for all the winter sports. Oh, that's amazing, such an inspiring place to, and do you ever kind of compose here and stuff? Oh yeah, all yeah. the time. Uh, this piano has found itself in major K-pop singles and pop songs. Wow. Um, EDM records to orchestral hybrid pieces I've been working on lately to my band The Spaces that we track this piano frequently so it's ended up in a lot of recordings over the years. What's really lacking on Piano Book is the slightly brighter, I don't like particularly kind of brittle sounding pianos but this has a, a really pleasant brightness that's still quite mellow. So what I'm thinking of is employing the template that I made for Bentley. It's going up in kind of a triad form, so it's kind of major and minor triads. There's two velocity layers. I think because of this brightness, what we can do is just a final, almost like an overdub pass mm -hmm. of the upper layer. Two hours plus the overdubs should equal roughly three hours of recording. We've got two 414s and I brought my pride and joy. Holy, dude, this thing weighs like 20 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Wow. So I just thought that that could be almost... Um, this is your player position. Yeah, player position, Mike. And then we'll just put something as an ambient. I've got a way of stereoizing that within contact. We'll be true stereo, but it is a bit of a, a cheat. And that'll be that. But I think the, the main battle today is going to be jet lag. And the altitude, don't And the know. altitude. We're at 9,300 yeah, right now. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Same. I love that what you told me earlier that it means you get drunk twice as quick. Yes, because golf balls go 30% farther because the air is thinner mm -hmm. and because your blood is thinner due to the lack of oxygen. With the wine tonight, you'll have one glass and you'll feel like you've had two and a half. What would you say? With the lid up or down? Um, I generally prefer the sound with the lid down. With the lid down. Um, generally speaking, but hey, you know, I think mm. we can consider but, getting creative with this. And well, I, I, I preferred it when you when you played it with yeah. the lid down. I just think it just takes a little bit of that brittle quality. If there yeah. was one pass or half of a pass with it up for layering purposes. That could be fun. Maybe we could do the loud layer. Sure. Just do a little mini reset and uh, Great, so should yeah. we get, get mic in? Let's do it. Do you ever just like break down in your studio at home and just like cable things and just I used move to things when... around and just rejuvenate the energy in the room? Yeah, I did, I did it recently. I found I managed to make a lot of extra space by moving like a desk that I had down. But it's my studio is all kind of properly wired in back now by some professionals, so it's... Nice. I don't have anything built into the walls, but... Right. Everything's cable tied, it's just nice and neat. Oh, that's cool. It's, it's really made a difference in just how I feel. 
and my studio. That's that's the thing I always say. This is what we're doing is we're in the we're in the game of making feelings. feelings. <laughs> what inspired the book? I wanted to make my own sample library. Yeah, a library in kind of plain sight. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if people could contribute to it? Yeah. And I thought, well, what is what is the instrument that you know everyone can sample? I, mean, I wouldn't say sampling pianos is easy, but it is because of the nature of it being a, largely a, you know a, a trigger, as opposed to being able to bow a violin. Um, and I do think that these you know these pianos they're kind of becoming extinct. So to to kind of capture them, I think is. Yeah. Now, is this uh, capable of sending Phantom to some channels and not to others? Yes, yeah, we can do that. Because these two console. require the, this one, yep. definitely not a likey at all. -y. Do you want to just give the piano a quick play and I'm yep. going to do Jake Jackson's trick of just stick, <laughs> sticking your ear where the headphones are? Yep. situations but right here has always presented a pretty good That's it, just smacking your national symbol. <laughs> Alright Christian so I'm gonna how does this look right here? Just kind of pointing this oh, right. towards yeah. yeah. Okay it's a hot cardio I think yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah yeah so should we connect up yeah. So, should we say one, two, three, four? Yeah. Oh, such a beautiful sounding piano. Thank you, friend. So, could we pan one, two, hard right, left? Yeah. Pan number three, uh, ten past, and number four, ten two. Oh, I'm starting to hear everything now. This in Manchester, I try to do it like a single pass, but um, what I'll probably do is just go. Let's let's take that one again, and we stop and okay. take it again. Okay. Well, I'll try not to. Um, this is the first time I'm looking at this. So, and, and uh, for for my role with this, um, anything I need to be looking out for, obviously, other than just the obvious clippings and so forth. If you clock any noises, you think I've missed okay. uh, bars that we need to do pickups on. It's difficult to play this quietly, actually, this piano. Yeah, sometimes it, it's, it takes some getting used to. That'll be good. That's sounding good here. I'm going to do an experiment which I've been wanting to do for years, which is what I'm going to call inertial fortissimo. So when it's counting, I'm going to go... Nice. So the piano is alive? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Could be okay. effective. Uh, this is all about experimentation, and we're also going to lift the, the lid up, aren't we? It I'm was sounding awesome. great, though. Dude, it's, it's... I think it's actually beautiful, man. Do you like... Editing in Logic. I know you're in Logic, but have you, I mean, being also a Pro Tools user, I mean, there's, that's always the big debate is Pro Tools is hands down better for audio editing. What do you think? 
Uh, there's a couple of tricks I do in Logic that Pro Tools can't do. It's just because Logic's like a, an instrument to me. You know, I find yeah. it really. I do love Pro Tools, but it's um, yeah. I do, I'm using it less and less because um, I'm doing less film. That's when it really comes into its own. Is when you've got multiple reels. Yeah. Like I mean, Tab the Transient and all that. That was one of Fla uh, Pro Tools' yeah. flagship feature. Yeah. But the Marquee Tool Arrows. It's like yeah. Holy shit. You're going to have to show me how to do that because... Oh, really? oh, you guys going to save you something? <laughs> Don't you love it? You've been using the software for 15 years and you meet somebody random and, like, and it shows you... But one that's, how, that's how it always it's, is. It's, you, it's always just, you, have, you always have that moment, even and, if it's someone's an absolute ninja. Where someone goes, I don't know, I don't know, what did you just do there? And you go, weeks no, of my no. life! <laughs> exactly, <laughs> all the time. All done. Well done, mate. Wow, dude. <laughs> that's a clash of cultures there. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so that's great. It's the, the, the loud. I'd be interested to see how those those inertial things uh, uh, work. Like, if they make a difference. More harmonics. Yeah, yeah, I think you want. You definitely hear the difference. It, it's uh, definitely a lot, a lot more chaos there. Yeah. But it reminds me though that we did this felt piano back in the day. We thought we'd just do like a really like fortissimo. Mm -hmm. Blair, it was really funny because we got an engineer to, to play it. He's a young guy. And I played it and it was just, it was like he ran to the back of the studio and took a running jump and then... <laughs> it's like, <laughs> piano's just two not a sound like that. So anyway, awesome. I've been really admiring such a good bit of taxidermy now. I, I'm a lover of really bad taxidermy, of which... which Edinburgh is plentiful, but that's yeah. that's a good bit of taxidermy. Yeah, it is. She's a beauty. Huh? So, this has been a crazy day, man. Yeah, yeah. We're over 12,000 feet right now. 12,200, give or take. <sighs> and yeah, you, you feel it. You definitely feel it. But it's been great to share, you know, your space. What an amazing piano. That experience has been great to work together. Tell me about um, kind of where you're at with... Uh, your career and stuff because you've been doing media composition for about two or three years yes but made that transition from the pop and edm world and still doing a lot of pop music and always being about the song and playing piano and programming all that good stuff but you know i've always from from my influences of the bts of the world and the junkie excels of when i was a teenager they always had this aesthetic and tone and, and textures and musicality of film scoring and i just always thought hmm, that's going to be a natural transition for me one day so I've been very fortunate to have gotten involved in the video game industry and working with film and working with some of the, those people I've already mentioned. Because you're not kind of <clears throat> formally trained or traditionally trained is the, the way I like to, Correct. Yes. to call it. And do you feel that as a hindrance or do you just bring other tools to the table? Sometimes it might take me three, four, five takes to nail my piano parts. And, but you know, technology is there to help assist me with that. And it's companies like Spitfire, it's companies like the outputs of the world or just pedals, you know, to inspire a tone. Yeah. It, it's technology is a counterpart to the music making process. And, and there's I, chops that you have that traditionally trained conservatoire composers don't possess. Perhaps, yeah. I won't be able to write a John Williams score tomorrow, but I'm just, I just want to challenge the sonic and melodic boundaries as best as I can within myself. I always say embrace your, your own heritage. Don't write yeah. John Williams, write a Ross score. You know? Exactly, you know? yeah. And that's actually a good valuable learning lesson for all other composers or producers in the pop urban world. Don't try to be like Timberland or whatever. Yeah. Just do what you do. If you could travel back in time and uh, tell yourself something 10 years ago, what, what would that be? Don't draw comparisons of yourself to others or companies, entities or individuals. Just everybody has, we all have our own path and we just need to embrace the journey to get to your destination. And a, a small example of that would be, I remember when I met a singer-songwriter when I was 18, 19 years old in high school, and we kind of developed and grew with each other. And a couple years later, when that person was 21, 22, was having hit records. And I was thinking, gosh, I was you know, showing this person how to do this, and I don't have hit records at 21 or 22 years old. And it's all of this about the journey. That person no longer is in music uh, by choice and is doing things elsewhere and is very happy. 
and I've had this great 10, 12 year career of traveling the world, making music for people, companies, major artists, and it's all just part of the journey. So don't draw comparisons, we all have our own thing and um, that helps a lot and especially in the, in the days of social media, it's easy to pull up your, your, uh, your stream you. and, and just quickly, even if it's just small comparisons, why don't I have that? Yeah. Don't, don't do that. And that's something that I feel like I have a pretty good hand, yeah. control on. But if I would, could tell myself that when I'm 20, that probably would have saved me some, some upset feelings, you know. Yeah, I, I, I totally echo that. And it's become a bit of a leitmotif when I meet composers. Harry Gregson Williams said, it's not a race. Yeah. Yeah. Ross, man, it's been an absolute hey, pleasure. Christian, Thanks so much. Come back in the time, <laughs> Absolutely. <man. laughs> so I'm going to be working on this piano. Subscribe, ding that bell if you haven't done already to be notified the next time we put a film up. And one of these for Ross and your wonderful family. For me, uh, music is about bringing people together. It's coming on adventures, meeting new people, making new friends, strength in numbers. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. Yes. And currently, we're standing on a very tall mountain. Should we get off it? Yes, let's go. Brilliant. See you next time. Let's go. It's this way, isn't it? Yeah. Yep.